Hello student, this is Anup Sao from Kolkata. Today I am going to introduce a very important topic and uh, the topic name is Kepler's law of planetary motion. Kepler's law of planetary motion. So from topic you must be, um, must, must have, uh, have estimated about uh, what the topics revolves around. It's about a planetary motion, okay? <coughs> there are three law of uh, here the first law second law and uh, third law i am going to discuss one by one each law the first law says that each planet revolves around the sun in an elliptical orbit with the sun at one focus of ellipse this is a picture of an ellipse and here there are two focus one is s1 and other is s2 okay uh, i'm just uh, i just like to uh, say something about ellipse here this line AB is uh, called major axis and this line CD is called minor axis okay and uh, this is the focus S1 and there uh, are two focus in the ellipse this is here S1 and S2 and let us in this example I'm, I'm assuming that sun is at the position S1 so here the planet revolves in this path and when it approaches towards sun it is fine that when it is it is at a the distance between sun and planet is minimum and that position is known as perihelion 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 okay and during approaching towards sun its speed increases and when it goes past a point it just goes away from sun and gradually its speed decreases and when it uh, reaches to the point b it it is at that point at maximum distance from sun sun is supposed to be at s1 point so that position is known as a failure Okay, so B is the position of A phalion and A is the position of perihelion. So, next second law. Second law says that the line joining the sun and the planet shifts out equal area in equal times. Again, I am uh, telling the line joining the sun and the planet shifts out equal areas in equal time. So, this is an elliptical uh, path, and uh, let us suppose. In equal time, in equal time, the line joining this is sun and this is planet. Okay, the in equal time, this line as a uh, reaches to in a certain time t, it the line as a reaches to as b position. Okay, so the area covered will be as b a. Similarly, uh, c d s is the area covered by the planet uh, covered by the planet uh, in equal time in the same time t and this one to this area so in all cases this area will be same okay <coughs> shifts out means uh, just suppose that this is a position at one point now if uh, the planet reaches to this position this line rotates and it shifts out some area it new position it will reach to this position so shifts the, out the area the area is just shaded here by me okay so this one is the second law and the third law third law is very important Mm, third law says that the square of the period of revolution of any planet around the sun is proportional to the cube of its mean distance from the sun so if the total uh, period of uh, the period of revolution that is when it completes uh, one complete rotate sun uh, planet completes one complete rotation the time taken by it is known as the time period uh, time period or period of revolution whatever it would be so if it is supposed to be capital T so it and the R be the mean distance 
here the distance is not constant if i am supposing uh, in one case that the path is uh, uh, circular and if r is the mean distance or r is the distance uh, between the sun and the planet that is r is the orbit of the path then in that case t square must be proportional to the q of the mean distance from the sun mean distance of the planet from the sun so these are the explanation of the first law second law and third one okay so in the next topic i am uh, uh, going to discuss about uh, deduction of the third law of kepler's planetary motion from newton's law of gravitation that is this one so <clears throat> let us suppose the path is circular actually the part is not circular but it can be supposed at uh, the plus 2 level uh, to any hs student that the path is circular okay uh, because we do not need uh, so much precision uh, so we can assume that path is circular because if i am supposing elliptical then the calculation will be very much difficult and it will be uh, somewhat more cumbersome to uh, understand uh, for the students so i am supposing that path is circular okay and uh, if m is the mass of the sun and it is at the center and this planet is revolving around this circular path uh, around the sun and at one point it is at position m and this is the distance between sun and the planet is r okay so we know very well that there is a gravitational attraction force and the gravitational attraction force between uh, sun and planet is g mm by r square where value of g is equal to 6.67 to 10 to the power minus 11 okay so here g is the gravitational constant universal gravitational constant m is the mass of the sun small m is the mass of the planet and r is the distance between planet and the sun so now <coughs> this gravitational attraction force provides the necessary centripetal force such that the planet revolves around the sun in a circular orbit if the planet if anybody is moving in a circular path then there must be a centripetal force acting on it and this is felicitated this is provided by any other force here gravitational attraction force is providing the necessary centripetal force so in that case the centripetal force will be equal to fc is equal to m v square by r where v is the speed of the planet and m is the mass of the planet so this f must be equal to fc we could write over here mv square by r is equal to g mm by r square so r r will cancel out we will get uh, here v square is equal to g m by r okay now again uh, we know uh, very well that velocity velocity is equal to distance by time so if the uh, if the uh, <coughs> if the period of the planet is capital t so it will traverse a distance along the circumference and it will complete a total distance equal to the circumference that is 2 pi r in the time capital T where T is the time period taken by the planet to complete one complete uh, revolution okay so this is equal to V and now I have if I am a squaring taking a square both side we I will get 4 pi square r square divided by t square 
now this method is supposed to be first equation this is supposed to be second equation equating both equation I will get gm divided by r is equal to 4 pi square r square t square on rearrangement I will get t square is equal to 4 pi square gm into rq now what is this this whole expression is a constant and at last we will find that t square varies rq because this is a constant pi is constant capital g is constant and this is the mass of the sun that is also a constant so we are getting that the square of the period of revolution is proportional to the cube of the mean distance of the planet from the sun okay and this is not dependent on the mass of the planet sometimes the question is asked that uh, prove that uh, the period of the rotation revolution of the planet is not depending on its mass okay thank you for watching this video and if you like you could share it you could subscribe me and <clears throat> just uh, click on the bell button of to get the notification of the new video uploaded by me thank you again